have any guidance, any tips that you want to share with students that are coming from a non-traditional background looking to get into medical school? Coming from working in a professional environment where I had high expectations and things like that and now going into medical school where there's still high expectations, but you're very much in a learner setting. Do you regret being here? And then what is the best part about being a doctor for people that are trying to decide between other professions? How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a final year medical student studying in Canada and today I've got a very special guest with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey, my name is Mike. I'm a medical student also working at the same medical school as Gianluca. I'm originally from Alberta here in Canada. A um, few things outside of school that I really like to do. I'm a pretty active guy. I enjoy swimming, enjoy biking, um, and generally enjoy food. It's probably my main hobbies at this point in time. <laughs> We're gonna ask more in just a little bit, but I had this idea the other day. I feel like now, two and a half, three years into my channel, you guys know a lot about me. I've been making videos fairly consistently and my story as a pre-med going into medical school was maybe slightly different than the traditional narrative. My GPA needed to be improved. I did a few other things, but other than that, it was pretty standard. I came from a standard pre-med program. I was biomedical science. I had to work really hard for the MCAT and I did good and I ended up getting into medical school. What I would like to do though, is maybe showcase some other people's journeys into medicine. I think that it's really important moving forward to acknowledge that we don't all come from the same spot. And I think it's really interesting to see how other people's journeys are different than mine. And I think you got a lot of me already. So I'm happy that Micah is here today joining us. Um, I have five questions for him and I hate to put him on the spot, but that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, Michael, we're going to start off. That's okay with you. Perfect. Tell us a little bit more about how you got, what was your journey like to medical school? How did you get here? What did you do before? Non-traditional is the word I typically use to describe when people ask. Mm -hmm. Medicine wasn't something that I had intended when I was choosing my undergraduate degree. It was always something I was interested in, but um, in the back of my mind, you know, I had done science all throughout high school and going into undergraduate, I really wanted to try something else. Um, so that's why I ultimately chose business. I had no prior experience into it. I enjoyed math, I enjoyed economics, and I thought it would be a kind of a good foray into that. So you did a business undergrad? I did, yes. Where? At Western University at the Ivy Business School. How long were you there for? Four years. Four years at Western, the Ivy Business School. Yeah. Was there a master's or anything after that? It was just four years? No master's, just straight four years. Okay, sorry to cut you off. No, no worries. worries, no worries. So, um, Spent a lot of time kind of thinking about what I wanted to do within business. In the back of my mind, I had always kind of been debating medicine. And then as I got into business school, I became really excited about health technologies. And there's kind of a industry or sector of business called social impact. Um, and so I became more interested in social impact industries. So things like social finance, I spent the summer working in private equity that was more geared towards uh, investing in impactful companies with sustainable outcomes. Um, and then, had the opportunity to actually work abroad in Amsterdam for a health technology company. Mm -hmm. But before I kind of made it to Amsterdam, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, what are some other career opportunities that I would like to pursue? Or what are some avenues that I'd like to have open? And medicine was always one that intrigued me. Um, but when I started undergraduate degree, there were still a lot of science prerequisites that programs required. Mm -hmm. And then as I went through my um, education, a lot of those programs kind of rolled out or rolled back on their requirements. So mm -hmm. the only thing really standing between me and medical school was writing the MCAT. Can I pause you there for a yeah, second? Yeah, absolutely. You went into undergrad, a business undergrad, you already wanted to go to medical school at the time or you didn't want to go to medical school when you first started off undergrad? I was undecided. Okay. So I, it wasn't my goal. Uh -huh. um, it was more of, I was looking at kind of alternative career paths. Mm -hmm. and in my mind, when I was in second and third and fourth year, I was thinking of kind of, I was kind of paralleling, doing more social impact work, but then also wanting to pursue medicine. Okay. Um, so that's why I ultimately chose to write the MCAT. Nice. And apply to medical school. But as I was kind of doing that, mm -hmm. I was still trying to line up career opportunities outside of medicine because as I'm sure you've kind of spoken with your followers about, it's very competitive to get into medical school here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't, I wasn't trying to put all my eggs in that basket necessarily. Right. And I was more trying to think this is something that really interests me. Mm -hmm. Let me apply and let me see how far I can get with kind of the things I've already done. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also really interested in this other part, which is the business side. So, so why business? Why was business, would you say that business is a good option for students looking to go into med school eventually one day? Generally, I think that doing a non-traditional path is something exciting, but I think it is higher risk than doing the more traditional path, which is doing your pre, your medical science degree or your biomedical sciences prior to applying to medical school. I think people generally have a greater chance of getting to medical school by doing the traditional path. 
Um, but I have no regrets about doing the non-traditional path. I had good success in my application and, and I really enjoyed kind of developing that secondary skill set before medical school. Mm -hmm. um, and something that I really appreciate in medical school is having that alternative skill set as well. Something that I can bring to different conversations and I'm absolutely lacking a little bit of the basic science that most medical students bring coming from more of a traditional path, but um, I've appreciated having that different skill set to bring to conversations. So many of you probably don't know Micah at this point. I'm saying many because there is the off chance that maybe one of our classmates are watching this video at some point in the future. But Mike is a very humble guy. He will not tell you this, but he is one of the most brilliant people that we have in the program, especially in the first half. Uh, we would do these tutorial groups where we'd all come together and try and teach each other different topics. And Micah always had something that was really insightful to say. Um, all that being said, what was the most difficult part about medical school coming from a business background? Yeah, I appreciate that. It's very kind. Yeah. Thank you. No Thank problem. You. Um, I would say the hardest part was it was a very steep learning curve. In business school, we're taught a very different kind of thinking than it is, is required within medical school. I would say generally, kind of the theme of business school is thinking strategically, and you do a lot of strategic thinking within medicine, but the bulk of our learning, especially at this time during our training, is rote memorization and application and pattern recognition, mm -hmm. um, and kind of transferring that thought process from the critical thinking to the rote memorization and pattern recognition was definitely a challenge and I spent many hours definitely in kind of the first four months just getting up to date on all of our basic sciences, you know, how does a cell work, <laughs> things like that. Things that probably sound silly to a lot of reviewers that have dedicated their last three, four years to, to this kind of work, but things that I hadn't necessarily updated since I studied for the MCAT. And how was the MCAT for you? As, as someone that hadn't taken a lot of the sciences in undergrad, did you find it was more difficult? It's probably more difficult is what I would think, definitely, right? It's yeah. difficult for me, and I had a pre-med undergrad. <laughs> yeah, you know, my, my go-to line is I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Um, studying for that exam was tough. It's a pretty challenging exam to get through. It takes a lot of kind of mental stamina that uh, you, you just develop over time with studying. Mm -hmm. But there were definitely parts of the MCAT that I realized it would take too long to develop skill and knowledge in that area. I'm looking at you, organic chemistry. Um, and I kind of said, you know, let me dedicate more of my studying to things that I think are more high yield for the exam mm -hmm. and that I can necessarily or definitely get a better mark on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, hard for sure. Definitely. Definitely. How long did you study for? Two, just over two months. Wow. But dedicated studying. So I was grateful that I had worked a summer previously. I was able to kind of take the time and I had supportive parents and yeah. just kind of study for the summer. Uh -huh. um, so I studied from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. five days a week and then wrote an exam every Saturday, reviewed it every Sunday. And right. like I did that for two months. So I think that's kind of the people can do it longitudinally, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I was like, just in terms of career planning and timelines, it was, I had that kind of two months to really just chunk out and dedicate to studying. And my goal was to not write it again. So I think that's a pretty big takeaway. Most students that I've spoken to at this point, regardless of what program they're from, myself included, when it's time for that dedicated study block, you need those multiple days of back to back every day, like full-time job, at least in a lot of students that I've talking to and a big focus on doing sample tests, practice tests, those really help your score out in the long run too. I know you talked about the different schematics and things that were hard for you in medical school. Was there a particular organ system that was rough? Was there a particular clerkship block that was a little bit rougher than the other ones? Any stories for things that you feel like unique to your situation were a little bit more challenging? Mm, unique to my situation. Definitely neurology is one that's challenging. Okay. Neuroanatomy in general, the brain to me just looks like an ocean and it's very challenging to differentiate the different parts within. Mm -hmm. um, that's always been an area I've struggled with. I've put a lot of time to listen to podcasts, seeing resources that try and teach more of like approach to neurology rather than specific like neuroanatomy memorization. Mm -hmm. um, I would say neurology and pre-clerkship was probably the hardest. Clerkship in general, I would say has just been challenging. I can't... I, I don't know if there's been one specific part. Um, Surgery was definitely my hardest, and I've talked about that uh, a few times in, in different videos. Um, but yeah, I, I think it varies like on what's going on at the time, if you're doing other research projects, any mm. extracurriculars, that kind of makes clerkship a little bit harder. Right. What about, what about what are some of the things that you found you had a leg up because you came from a business background? 
there, there, there's definitely got to be some things in medicine that probably came a little bit easier to you because you had different ways of thinking about things, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that business school did well for me and one thing I really appreciated for my prior training was we did a lot of presentations and we did a lot of interacting with clients and in my other work, I it was a very professional environment. So um, rotations that required a lot of patient interaction like family medicine, psychiatry, pediatrics, I felt like I was definitely well positioned to do well in my patient interactions just because you can handle patient conversations a lot better when you've worked in a professional environment, I find. Um, and it was, I just really enjoyed those rotations because I felt more confident and it was a lot more focused. You definitely had clinical and medical skills to apply, mm -hmm. but there was a large emphasis on your people skills as well. And I felt that I could kind of bring that from my prior experiences to medical school. Awesome. That, that's what's really good. I, um, you know, a, a big part about bringing you on here was because I, I've gotten questions from students and other programs and I, and I kind of feel bad because I like to speak from a place of experience, but sometimes I, I quite actually don't have the experience and then I'm kind of just stuck there thinking about what I, what I would like to say. The question I'm going to redirect towards you now is for students that are coming from a more, we'll call it a non-traditional background. You've identified that, you know, you had to work really, really hard in pre-clerkship. The MCAT was a little bit more difficult. Do you have any guidance, any tips that you want to share with students that are coming from a non-traditional background looking to get into medical school? I would say my first general guidance, even as you're considering whether or not medicine is, is a good career for you, is to really just kind of hunker down and have that conversation with yourself, people that you value in your life as to whether or not you want to commit to to medicine because it is it is a challenging career path that's long and there are lots of other awesome jobs out there as well um, and so coming from a non-traditional background you know one of the challenges honest challenges that I've had in medical school is since we're training you know compared to my peers who have graduated from medical school you know they're in careers now and are kind of going up through other careers whereas on our stage we're still very junior I think that's been a challenging Kind of reconciliation to have almost and something i struggled with initially was coming from working in a professional environment where i had high expectations and things like that and now going into medical school where there's still high expectations but you're very much in a learner setting mm -hmm. i think that was something to to think about going into medical school that i hadn't necessarily spent a lot of time pondering mm -hmm. um so maybe maybe if i could just try and kind of let that settle with me and maybe i misunderstood this wrong but one of your pieces of advice is to think about what you actually want to get into before you get here and know that medical school has some flaws associated with it too, perhaps? Is that is that kind of what you're touching on? Yeah, absolutely. I think medicine in general is challenging. Yes. There's, it's a very rewarding career. There's lots of cool opportunities in it, yeah. um, but there's also lots of cool opportunities outside of medicine. Yeah, so really, 100%. Yeah, so really like, think just like you, you know, you're doing medicine, but you're also pursuing things outside of medicine to try and build a holistic approach to your career. Mm -hmm. I encourage students to really think about, there's a lot of hype around medicine, and I think a lot of that hype is valid, yeah. um, but also something to consider is whether or not there are other careers that interest you. That's gonna segment probably into our final question, and that is what is, what's the best part about being here? First of all, do you regret coming here? It doesn't sound like it at all, but what's, Number one, do you regret it? Number two, what is the best part about being here? Definitely don't regret it. Definitely don't regret it. I think I've learned a ton. I've grown immensely as an individual. I've met some incredible people and had some incredible conversations with patients. And I think in terms of the most rewarding part about medical school is probably the patient conversations that I've had, the experiences that I've had with individuals. Um, it's, it's pretty, it's a very unique, Feel in that sense where you get to interact with people at their most vulnerable time and it's a very privileged position to be sitting in when you can have those interactions and I think that is something that I reflect on daily is coming off a long shift it's like wow yeah I'm feeling pretty tired but I also had the opportunity to interact with people when they were very vulnerable and I actually was able to provide some help to them which is just something that I found that I have continued to find pretty rewarding um, challenging at times, but definitely rewarding and something that I will continue to look forward to throughout my career. Micah, thanks so much for coming by. Before we, we end it off, summarize for us. We're going to go from the top, top five things in order one more time. Give me two sentences. Give, what's the, uh, the, what was the hardest part about being in medical school? Steep learning curve as a non-traditional student. Okay. And, and what was the easiest part about being in medical school? Good people skills coming from a professional background. You're killing it. What, <laughs> do you regret being here? And then what is the best part about being a doctor for people that are trying to decide between other professions? Absolutely not. Don't regret being here. 
one of the best parts about this role and this career is the conversations you get to have with people. Any advice for students that are coming from a non-traditional background or a business background looking to get into uh, med school? Think critically about whether or not this is truly a career you want to do um, and ask other people as well because oftentimes people have really rewarding careers outside of medicine and that's a valuable conversation to have as well. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed it. Listen, Micah is one of my better friends here in medical school and everyone's awesome, but thankfully Micah's been in my clerkship group, which means that we have free access to him for at least the next two, three weeks until he starts residency. If you guys have any questions for him, leave them in the comment section below. I'll text them over to him. He'll let us know and we'll get you your answers as soon as possible, okay? Everyone take care and we'll see you all in the next one. See you. Later, buddy.